Hi all, uh, welcome to the uh, video session of uh, how to be an awesome test professional. Uh, so I'm going to discuss uh, how, what is the industrial demand that we have, what are the trends in the industry, and how you can meet these trends, how you can be a unique person, how you can be a uh, technical uh, quality engineer in the industry. Okay, so let's start with the session. Okay. So automation is uh, one of the buzzing words in the industry. It has been here for a long time. May, uh, it has been here for uh, 10 years. Uh, and now we see uh, actually a boom in uh, test automation. Okay, Most of the vendors, software vendors, now invest on test automation. Because if you invest it correctly, there is a high return and there is a big uh, kind of uh, you know sharing on uh, test uh, uh, software testing uh, activities and also there are a lot of uh, open source tools which have come to the test automation arena so people uh, the software vendors even the projects are now emphasizing more towards the practice of test automation so most of the Sri Lankan software development companies now have been moved towards test automation because they have understand the return which they can gain. So moving in, so these are the test automation trends now. As you see, there is a lot of trends to use BDD, behavioral driven development, which will actually create test automation scenarios, which will actually model the behavior of the system that is being developed or that is being requested by the customer. So most, more of the uh, automation scenarios, we can see most of these scenarios or the automation frameworks have used uh, J-Behave and Cucumber for behavioral driven development and most of the scenarios now are in human readable form. So that is one of the developments and we go towards DevOps. So the DevOps in the sense we as a team work towards coding and as a team work towards testing so it's not like you know developer does their own work QA does their own work no QA tries to jump into development and does the coding plus the developer can also do automation uh, automate developing automation scripts plus also the QA should be able to go and you know we had an earlier trend that the unit test cases are only done by developers but in the future, it will be QA who will go and do the unit test cases. So we can also see there are a lot of programming languages which have come in. And <coughs> since uh, Java is given free open source, so there are a lot of you know Java-based uh, automation frameworks. But there are other programming languages which is much faster than Java, like Ruby. So we can see there will be an increased percentage on uh, automation frameworks which we'll use on Ruby. So to exploit this uh, fast uh, speed of you know execution. So we can also see there are a lot of uh, there will be in the future there will be not just a Selenium based you know so automation uh, frameworks. So there are limitations in Selenium and uh, there are new tools which are coming in like Express or the uh, IO plus nightwork.js and also there are uh, angular based you know test automation tools which we, are, we can use we can automate using angular angular or ajax sites uh, so there are a lot of wrappers coming in like selenite so you can see there are uh, there's just not it's, it's the future is not just on selenium so if you move towards the job trends in uh, the industry there are a lot of other tools which are demanded by the organizations. So you guys had to learn about not just Selenium, about Protractor, Nightwatch.js, even if you're doing Windows automation, you have to learn about, you know, uh, Squish. And also that is that is a commercial tool, but also non-commercial tools like Vinium and also Catalyst Studio. So you guys had to learn the tools that go go according to the tools that to achieve your target, to be an effective, good, great uh, test 
automation professional. Okay, so language wise, computer language wise, there is a high need. So it's not just Java based, you also know other languages like C double plus C sharp, so Python, Ruby, in order to you know be a diversified test automation professional. So first, what can you do? Okay, so sometimes you might be in a manual uh, testing person. Sometimes you will be just covered the basics of test automation. So my recommendation is to go to the fantastic tutorial sites that is available like Guru 99 uh, tutorials fine. Then you go through some of the YouTube videos which are available. Just subscribe to some of the YouTube channels which where experts are going through, you know, giving video tutorials on how you can start on the automation uh, tools. Then, <coughs> then it, the next stage that you can do is you can connect with LinkedIn experts like Joe Calentino, Angie Jones, or any of the automation specialists, so that you can connect, you can talk with them, and you can go through. You, if you have any doubts, you can clear with them. So hi, I recommend highly to highly interact with the people who are connected to LinkedIn. To highly interact with the you know, there are a lot of uh, online uh, groups which connects, which pertains to automation. So I highly recommend everyone to l get connected to these groups. And also recently, I have initiated a WhatsApp site. So you can get in, join in, and there are a lot of professionals who help each other. So this is where we, like, try to globally, you know, try to improve by going through this. So get access to blogs like uh, Stack Overflow. When you get any automation issues, there are a lot of help, there are a lot of problems, solutions in Stack Overflow. So go through these uh, resources and finally get into hold of automation meetups so that you can share your ideas. Okay. How is Selenium, learning Selenium is enough? No. Yeah. Number one, you cannot just be dependent on Selenium. There are a lot of tools which have been come into the market. So we can see a maturity in automation these days, these years. So there will be not just Selenium. There are a lot of Selenium wrappers which have been uh, introduced by a lot of community of developers because there are disadvantages limitations in Selenium. But these disadvantages limitations limitations are being covered by these wrappers and there are a lot of tools like Cypress.io and there are tools like you know Catalan Studio which tries to be far more better off compared to Selenium so it does not Selenium does not guarantee the savior of automation there are limitations in Selenium so Selenium does not cater web services desktop applications mobile so you had to learn other tools so if Selenium has dependency just on automating web UI test scenarios. So there is a need for, you know, uh, automation. There is a need uh, triangle. So first, we started automating the unit test cases. So we should, as automation professionals, we should know how to automate unit test cases. Then we should we climb up the triangle, then we try to do web services automation. We try to integrate these web services and do integration testing. Then we can also, at the lowest range, we can do component-based web services testing. Then we move out, to move up to the ladder. Then what we do is we integrate these web services with GUI test cases and we do a kind of a UI-based integrated testing. So there we can use Selenium, but if we are going to API or web services testing, we can use REST Assured or SOAP UI. So this is the uh, needs hierarchy when it comes to automation. So what are there? What are the tools there? So there is an increased need to do microservices. There is a microservice architectures coming up for in the uh, software industry. So you guys have to check this, test this, not in manual but in automated way. So there is an increased need for, you know, test or the automated testing of web services. So for that, we can use REST Assured, 
for creating framework. There is another good tool called Karate, which is somewhat BDD based. Okay, so let's move on. So you all guys, we cannot just depend on, you know, we will get a project on web, or we will do a uh, testing on a, uh, automated testing on a web based UI. No, there are a lot of desktop applications which are coming up so we can use the auto IT or web app driver these are new tools which have come out these are open source tools so highly recommend go on download these tools and try to you know meddle with these tools then there's another great or desktop automation tool called Binium which is also allows you it's an extension of Selenium which allows you to automate Windows applications so you can see you are not just you know, early stages, people think, okay, we have a set of manual test case, we have automation tool, now let's start automation. No, an automation test profession has a far more demanding career. So you will have to automate using automated test cases, but you may have to use do performance testing using JMeter, plus you will have to create the, the skill relies on the, the how effective you can come up with a framework. So that the other thing is you all have to do code quality, integration with code quality tools, and integration with continuous integration because a lot of projects are on agile base and continuous integration, continuous delivery base. So you all have to integrate with you know, continuous integration tools like Jenkins. So then the, the other uh, skill set that you should have is to have your code rep uh, in a repository and multiple sharing with it. That is a code share repository so then you all should have an understanding a skill set of this entire picture not just automating test cases so you can see the next trend that is coming up is we are moving through mobility that is all the applications are moved into mobile devices because it's easy for us to access applications where we go into where we go in the bar, inside the bus, inside the train, we can access applications. So there is increased need. So there is an increased need for do testing. When there are applications going to mobility, there is an increased, we have to guarantee that the applications are perfect according to the requirements. So we do manual testing, but then we have to ultimately automate this test cases. So there is a great challenge when we come to automating test cases because they have multiple OS, multiple OS versions, multiple screen resolutions, and multiple devices. So the automation, there are a lot of challenges when it comes, but there are tools called FEM, Serenite, Keep It Functional, MonkeyTalk, and RoboTM. So you have to know most of these automation and tools. You have to practice and you have to learn it. Then the other thing I just want to know is learning and experience is separate, but people try to think to get experience, you have to get into a project, get into an organization. No. So experience is where you take a tool, download it, and try to do, uh, try to do some tutorials on the tool, and try to get familiar with the tool, identify what, is, what can be done in the tool, what cannot be done. So this is how you gain experience. So you should also know how to integrate with, you know, cloud-based test automation solutions like Source Labs when it comes to browser stack. So this is the mobile automation arena. You can see the other thing when you do mobile automation is that you may have to verify whether the web services are according to the requirements. So then you all might have to use Rest Assured or SOAP UI to test the API involving the website's API involving the mobile applications. So you cannot just put automation. You all have to evaluate whether the automation can be applied. So what when we come into uh, deciding automation, we should uh, look at which test we are going to automate. Whether there are significant amount of repeatable test cases. Whether these test cases can be automated with a specific tool. Uh, so when we automate which devices, if we are doing mobility, mobility, which devices we, uh, which devices we are going to automate, what are the simulators, uh, emulators available, or what kind of real devices that we are going to run these scripts. And also, when 
is the other question when are we going to introduce automation in the QA cycle are we going to do it after delivery are we going to start when the, the development is completed are we going to practice something like stress driven development when it comes to automation so the other thing is how we are going to automate what tools we are going to use rather whether we are going to use commercial tools or open source tools whether a customer is allowing having a test, good testing budget then we can go for open so uh, commercial tools but if we are on strings and budgets then we have to go on open source tools and we have to know with the skill set what kind of people are available in our organization are we going to hire people to do automation or are we going to train people so these are the same decisions that we have to tell we have to think when we are going to apply automation successfully so determine project time when, the autom when you determine a project you cannot op put automation in every project and you should be, you know, also know that uh, the, the projects are not 100% automation so you should design the time so two months project, one month project, automation is not a, a highly good candidate. But also you should know the availability of manual test cases. There should be a considerable amount of manual test cases. And also you should know your quality QA, quality engineering, QE teams skills, the available skills, whether you have to get new team for this or whether you have to upgrade the team skills then also the technological platform that we are going to use. So how do, uh, first of all, when we bring automation to project, we should know uh, to do a proof of concept. We study the application. We look at the application, what, can, what is the platform, whether it's a web page, whether it has web services, or whether it's a desktop. Then refer the manual test, whether the manual test services, whether they are up to the standards, or whether they have detailed steps to automate. Since you choose a tool, to uh, perform the automation. So you look, we look at the platform, we look at the budget, we look at the skills. So if there are a lot of people who are skilled in doing, say, on Protractor, so then we take Protractor, and if it's web-based, the platform, yes, we can take Protractor. So it's, but according to budget, if you have stringent budgets, we go for open source tools. So these are the things that we should do when we going to implement automation. So the, the next area I want to cover is just learning automation tool doesn't work. You guys have to learn on auto, building automation frameworks. So it's the, the, it's the, the effectiveness of operation, uh, automation in your organization or in your project relies on how effective and efficient you have developed a framework. You should look at the reportability so that so the automation framework should give detailed reports which should even allow a manual tester to report defects. And also reusability. You should not reuse the same action in one or two test scenarios. So this one action, you should not repeat the same action, but you should ha use that common action and use it in one or two scenarios. Then it should be extendable. You should be able to plug in new automation tools, automation uh, add-ons, to your uh, framework, so it should be extendable, then configurable, you should not hard code the environment, hard user, user uh, credential details, it should be run according to, across the environments, so this should be configurable using text files, Excel files, then scalability, your automation framework should be applied to other projects, then it should be another, there is another component, your framework should be practical and viable. It should be not just, you know, taking another framework from another organization or another project and implementing it. Using a great technology, no. It should be practical and viable. So, the future is not going to be just Selenium. It is a two, the frameworks will be next gen, that is automation. I have to call it automation version 2. So, we will get framework with numerous set of tools, like a Swiss Army knife, Swiss Army knife, set of tools coming in so you can see one single framework having a lot of tools created in a lot of platforms so there are more diversified tools will be created and more technically you will be involved in designing these frameworks how can I go there learn automation so you want to be a good automation professional so learn automation tools which are available in the stack not just learn one tool learn how to integrate these test tools at framework level be an expert tool integration so you have to integrate 
continuous integration tools you have to integrate block, you have to integrate with block tracker tools state arrangement tools so you should have a knowledge on this read and update information which are available in the articles you should go through LinkedIn articles you should go through videos which are provided posted by other automation experts so that is my advice so there are a lot of tools selenium apm robot framework binium rest assured cucumber catalan series you should learn these tools there. so this is about the next gen framework you have a lot of tools integrated a lot of things jira Bugzilla. so you can can do these integrations with the web rest uh, apis available given by the providers and you can see a lot of headless browsing headless automation happening up because you may transfer your automation framework to a Linux machine which doesn't have a browser. So a lot of using of headless browsing. So there are a lot of automation frameworks. You should be able to use your existing knowledge into the new frameworks, so such as I Apache PUI, which you learn to parameterize data. You may have to use it in rest assured. So look at the best online resources, go through tutorials, go through tutorials for Guru 99, watch YouTube videos and connect with LinkedIn. Go to meetups, do public speaking, go to test conferences. This is how you expand your knowledge. Thank you, everyone.